<laughs> I'm like, even though I only have a mat on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Faker may be in trouble here, Deathmark. Tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Faker, what was that?! Zed is a foundational champion and a huge part of League of Legends as we know it today. Dade, 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 trying to catch Ambition here. There's the death mark going down. Anyone there to support? Helios is there. Dade, what a juke. Oh, what a great play doing the damage. Can he get out, though? Helios trying to make it not oh, so. He came what in the, the world? Main character, bro. Main character, bro! Because obviously now you're waiting for. Oh, we're waiting to see what Gerson will do in this trade. He's going in. Oh, he's took a tower hit there as Maple. Don't think the Death March got quite oh. enough damage from the Shuriken from the side. All right, nice. But after some serious nerfs, he's been basically relegated to Oblivion for years. A Zed must be kept weak because he is the most frustrating champion in League of Legends. But as frustrating as he might be, is this really the end for League's most iconic assassin? The Unseen Blade is the deadliest. All right, so before we start talking about Zed, I just want to let you all know to please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you're always up to date with our newest content. Also, we have merch. Check out the esports collection, both the classics and all the new stuff over at shop.thescore.com. Now, let's dive into Zed's story. Zed was released on November 13th, 2012, becoming the 107th edition to League of Legends. And the assassin was flashy in a way that no other champion had been before. I think a lot of the things that kind of strike me when Zed kind of came out was that his his ability to be able to kind of reward outplays and to be able to reward someone who truly understood like movement in the game with his uh, second shadow and his ultimate giving you basically three options of kind of like, I can stay here, I can go over there, I can go over here. Zed's kit allowed for quick, precise kills on squishy targets, reinforcing his role as a high risk, high reward champion. His ult made him temporarily untargetable, allowing him to dash around with his shadow clones, one-shotting his enemies. Zed's playstyle was highly mobile, creative, and had a ton of potential for cool outplays. Which might sound like a no-brainer to anyone that's picked up the game in recent years, but was revolutionary back in the day. He was like the champion that everyone kind of wanted to play. Uh, it was awesome, and also if you didn't get him, it was terrible, because he was just so overtuned and so unbelievably frustrating to deal with, but it was like when you got to play him, he was exceptionally fun. While some players made the argument that Zed was too strong, it was offset by the fact that he required a certain level of skill to be truly effective. In case you somehow missed it, arguably the most famous play in the history of League of Legends was actually a Zed versus Zed. I'm like, even though I only have a bat on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Faker may be in trouble here, Deathmark. Tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Faker, what was that?! It was in those early years that League saw a bona fide explosion in popularity, thanks in large part to the Zed plays executed by the most skilled players in the world. He finally had to push it too far and died. Ooh, Dade, 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 trying to catch Ambition here. There's the death mark going down. Anyone there to support? Helios is there. Dade, what a juke. Oh, what a great play doing the damage. Can he get out, though? Helios trying to make it not so. Oh, what in the, the world? Because obviously now you're waiting for Oh, we're waiting to see what Gerson will do in this trade. He's going in. Oh, he's took a tower hit there as Maple. Don't think the Death March got quite oh. enough damage from the Shuriken from the side. Got his gun. Oh, Shadow used. Fertilizer. It's all about fighting fights. Death March going down, but is it going to be enough? Dottie is going to be a. Oh! oh. Not enough to finish off either. Zed was basically a benchmark for how League's champion pool was going to evolve. Other champions like him sprung up and took over the rift, but the shadowy assassin kept pace with all the newcomers. Oh, hey, we! Oui. Zip! 
Pas le temps Alors, the announcer. Pas le temps Pas le temps Pas When it came to pro play, however, as the meta shaped itself around some of the newer champions, Zed didn't see a whole lot of action beyond season five, since his play style didn't lend itself too well to team fights. And as Riot's balance changes ebbed and flowed to accommodate new characters and ever evolving play styles, Zed lost a good chunk of his once game changing power. The meta kind of shifting away from that kind of style, a lot of bruisers and stuff and enchanters were very much kind of the norm. So the biggest counter to Zed is like, I have more HP, I get shields from my Lulu or my Janna, I've got things that can just stop you from basically bursting me out completely. And then he kind of was very, very limited in terms of the targets he could pick. For years, Zed languished. He was almost never picked in pro play or even high level solo queue. Sure, people tried to make him work as everything from a bruiser to a niche jungler, but it was easy to wonder whether this might actually be the end of League's most formative assassin. But come 2023, about a decade after his release, Zed was about to make a real splash in solo queue, and not in a good way. Riot made a few big changes to assassin items, sending Zed in particular deep into OP territory. With shadow manipulation and high mobility already making a skilled Zed pretty frustrating, the shadowy champion was now able to stack ability haste items, spam his W, and go nuts with Ravenous Hydra. All without any real sort of counterplay. Because fundamentally, when Zed is strong, he can be practically unstoppable. By October 2023, Zed was the most banned champion in solo queue, removed from champ select around a third of the time. And despite years of Zed being a low tier, frustration mounted. If you're not absolutely exceptional at the champion, it's not worth to take, and it's not worth to give it up to someone in case they've been secretly grinding it, and now they are exceptional at the champion, because we have no counterplay to that. So after a massive outcry from the player base, Zed's W was nerfed, along with several in-game items, dramatically reducing the champion's effectiveness. And in case anyone was wondering whether or not Riot intended to go that far, August, one of the game's oldest and most reputed designers, made Riot's stance on the topic very clear. Um, you're right, Zed is weak. Um, it is intentional. Uh, Zed must be kept weak because he is the most frustrating champion in League of Legends. And so for all of eternity, Zed will probably be slightly weaker than he should be. Dedicated Zed mains were shocked and dismayed, and the community at large felt that the assassin was being intentionally singled out as some sort of balanced pariah. After all, you have many other assassins who are just as, if not more frustrating than Zed, who is fairly difficult to play well and a fairly situational pick. And sure, once he's super fed and able to successfully one-shot someone, it feels bad. But that's how all assassins work. What was even more confusing about what August said was the fact that Zed has been clocking in at a less than stellar win rate of well under 50% across all ranks for most of the past year. So why would Riot bother kicking a champion who was already down? The answer to that part of the puzzle lay in Riot's criteria for balancing their champions. Normally, Riot prioritizes equalizing champions for a majority of players across all skill levels. But since the devs deemed him to be frustrating as hell to go up against, that's not actually what they wanted. So instead, they kept him intentionally weak, putting into question whether he'd ever be competitively viable ever again. Zed ult, uh, you look at it and it's actually got a lot of counterplay, which by the way, makes him weak in high MMR. He ults you and then there's like three seconds for like, you can run away, you can get shielded, you can heal, etc., etc., etc. But to a, especially a low MMR player who's getting ulted by Zed, the experience is he ults me, he does a blah, 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 blah. he blinks away, and then puts on his sunglasses and goes, cool guys don't look at explosions and walks away and you explode, right? And you're like, that wasn't fair. Now, to be fair, balancing characters in a game like League is far from easy. Like we are now sitting at 167 of them. 
The whole process is often shrouded in mystery. Riot seems to want their games to be played a certain way. Champions or abilities that fall outside of their desired parameters are hit with reworks to bring them in line. Like what Riot did with Zeri, for example. We very explicitly did not want it to be a Zeri meta at Worlds, so we nerfed her um, to beyond, uh, beyond what would be considered like balance to ensure that she wasn't a staple of the world's meta. But what Riot wants and what the community wants are not always the same thing. There is still an entire subset of players who aren't ready to give up on Zed. Seeing the devs willingly allow him to languish in obscurity feels bad. And why shouldn't it? Zed has been pretty much irrelevant in pro play for years. Sure, he's fun to watch, but if you want to win, you have to pick what's meta. And as it stands, Zed simply isn't that. Plenty of champions out there require less effort to master and provide a far better outcome if you choose them. And with so many to choose from, why would anyone bother picking what is by the dev's own admission an intentional liability? The answer may be simple. It's because Zed exists. Bah! What the f Hello. <laughs> because he's one of the OGs that made League of Legends what it is today. So I think that people love when Zed is there because he does feel like a champion that can excite, can you know, give us some of the greatest moments if, in, in the sports. And it's kind of the reason why we watch. Because he carved out a place in the community's hearts. The big thing as well, what a lot of people want, specifically me as well, is that you want entertainment. Styling all over Fnatic at him. Oh, no, 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 bro. My game! And because if you have somehow managed to truly master this champion, there is nothing you can't do. Patch 14.1b gave the assassin a few much needed buffs, bringing him more in line with Riot's general balance philosophy. While they can't all be the strongest, every champion should be at least playable. And my guess is that in the new season, we're probably gonna have a lot of, uh, we're gonna have an opportunity to buff the guy for, for a lot of different, um, a lot of Zed buffs. That would be my hope. We tend to look for opportunities to buff where we can. I think um, there's this perception that like we hate Zed and that's like why we tend to keep him like slightly weak, but it's actually the opposite. We really like Zed, but we recognize the fact that the character has to be tuned around ban rate. Now, to be clear, these buffs are unlikely to dramatically change the champion. And then Zed, and again, another big loser. All of his power was in the old Ravenous Hydra that worked on spells. That is gone. He's got to find a new build, doesn't have one yet. We're buffing Profane Hydra, but we think he's still far below the line. And perhaps more importantly, the developers aren't abandoning Zed a character who built the game into what it is today, way back before we even knew what that was. Mechanical, flashy, and exciting as hell. Until Bjergsen's there, Ultinaut are aware of it as they ping them out. They're trying to rush it down, but Ferenlo's been caught out, hasn't used the Shockwave yet, he's holding his nerve, and that's gonna be Maluno. The Shockwave only catching on Divisio. Stranglethorns, meanwhile, bounces up three members. Jayree gets caught, that's the death mark onto Kreaton. Bjergsen's gonna try and get it, he finishes it, picks up a double kill. Ferenlo gets in, it's a triple kill. is gonna get taken down, Bjergsen gets a quadra! Quadra kill, but Bjergsen comes in like Superman. It's not hard to understand why some people are nostalgic for the game's brightest golden years. Personally, I hope we haven't seen the end of Zed, and that one day, just like Faker did, someone will come along and challenge what is really possible.